Welcome to Facebook. I am Dr. Mary Neal. First we will have the reading of the word and then prayer. And we are ready. Okay, we in 1 Samuel 2nd uh, chapter starting from the first verse. Uh, then Hannah prayed, My heart rejoices in the Lord. The Lord has made me strong. Now I have in case we have anybody out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, that's the family of Yahweh, the Bible teaches us how we're justified by our faith if we believe on God and we believe that God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, we're justified by our faith. Then the Bible teaches us we're to confess that which we believe. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God has raised him, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead thou shalt be saved. Out of the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and confession is made unto salvation. Uh, Romans 10 and 13 says, If we confess uh, with our mouth the Lord Yeshua, and believe in our hearts, that means not only confess, but believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved. Romans 10 and 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mark 16, 16, He that believeth, he that continues to believe, and is baptized shall be saved. But he that believeth not shall be what? Shall be damned. That's Mark 16, uh, Mark chapter 16, uh, 1 John 1 and 9. If we confess our sins, he faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28, 13, he that confesses, continue to, and forsaken sins shall have mercy. But he that confesses and forsakes not his sins will not prosper. Praise God. Hallelujah. We are continuing with our teaching for, uh, this is number six. So we are continuing with the subject we started out on six weeks ago. And so tonight, our title, uh, the one I put out there, at least I think I did, uh, is teaching number six. If you're not remaining true to the Messiah teaching, you're in big, big trouble. Repent and believe the Messiah's teaching and what is written over everything anyone teaches, including me. Do not go beyond what is written. Therefore, get your mind ready for work. Keep yourselves under control and fix your hope fully on the gift, which is Yeshua the Messiah, you will receive when Yeshua the Messiah is revealed. Father in heaven, visit your people, those whom you gave to your son, Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus. And give them open ears to hear, spiritual eyes to see, and a heart of flesh to receive. In the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus. Let the Holy Ghost fall upon them that they might testify of who Yeshua Jesus said he is. I am the Son of the living God. If said, help me, I am in big trouble, will you assist, help me? If said, help me, the people of God, the Heavenly Father, 
are in big trouble. Would you assist? Help me. How? Share the truth. Teach the truth. And this is how you can help me. And this is how we can help each other. By sharing the truth according to what's written down in scripture. Remain true to the Messiah teaching. If we do not, we will not have both of them. The Father and His Son. If someone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, don't welcome him into your home. True. That's true. If someone comes to your home, to your church, and they don't bring that teaching, it says do not allow them in your home. And we'll complete that verse as we go forward, and I will give you the verse where you can find it as well. <clears throat> Do not go again beyond what the written, which means scriptures, says. Welcome the message and examine the scriptures every day to see if the things said and taught are true. I was using this particular verse uh, for a very long time and then I stopped using it. And actually it goes along with what we've been teaching for the last six week because you can find that scripture also in the book of acts where they did not believe everything paul said paul would teach and so what they would do they would examine the scriptures to see if what paul was teaching and saying was according to the scripture so this is what we should do when we hear someone bringing forth the word of God, preaching the word of God, prophesying the word of God, we need to go back to the Bible and search the script, scriptures daily to see if those things that are said are true or false. Now, when it says search the scripture daily, well, when you think about that, remember what Yeshua said. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out from the mouth of God. And Deuteronomy chapter 8 says the same thing, but it goes a little farther. It says this is how we live. So why should we search the scriptures to see if this is what the Messiah taught, or this is what is written down in the scripture those disciples taught? Why? Because if we do not, we can be deceived and we can be led astray. So that's why we need to search it for ourselves. You know, many times uh, certain groups or certain people might not encourage their congregation uh, meetings uh, to go back and search the scriptures because many times people really do not care or they do not want you to go back and search the scripture. You know why? Because just in case they are hiding truth, just in case they're stumbling over truth, just in case they don't know truth, they don't want you to know. And so many times people will not encourage people to search the scripture. All pastors, ministers, teachers, Sunday school teachers, whoever they are, if they are teaching the word of God, they need to encourage the people. Study the word of God for yourself. You know, we tell people to read, but the Bible never said read and show yourself approved. Now, it tells us to read the scripture, but it actually says study the scriptures and show yourself approved workmen that need is not to be ashamed but rightly dividing the word of truth and so this is why we want to study so we can rightly divide the word of truth these are questions i've been going through now for this makes six time because i did a class on a wednesday so this is number six and so i asked like uh, six different questions. I'm not sure if I have them all down. I think I do. And so what I did, I went and put uh, some of the scripture right by the questions that I'm going to ask. And I will continue to do this throughout this study because it's so important. If Yeshua Jesus taught his disciples and used the correct ways of doing things, would you receive it over what man teaches? As we said before, 
99% of preachers and teachers and evangelists and prophets and prophetesses and, and, and lay people, whoever, they will probably say yes. But let me read it again. If Yeshua Jesus taught his disciples and he taught them well and you the correct ways of doing things, would you receive it over what man teaches? Now, if people say yes, well, I know there is so much teaching out there, so much doctrine out there that's not according to God's word. And we're just receiving things because a person have a title on their name, maybe a preacher or a prophet or a prophetess or, or evangelist or, or, or a doctor or whatever. And so because a person have a title on the name, many times we trust them. Well, everybody that carrying the Bible doesn't mean they're walking in it. Everybody that teaching the Word of God doesn't mean they're obeying it. Everyone that's preaching doesn't mean they have read the whole Bible. That's why I encourage people, if you're teaching the Word of God, at least read the whole Bible. Because there are many things that are hidden from the foundation of the world. And if we don't search them out, we'll never find them. And so the Bible tells us again, it pleases God to hide a thing, but the honor of the king is to search out the matter. And so that's why we are to encourage people. Study the word of God for yourself. Don't just read it, but study the word and show yourself approved. And so again, I'm reading that particular question again. If Yahshua taught his disciples and you the correct way of doing things, would you receive it over what man teaches? Well, we've been sharing this scripture now going on three weeks because it is so powerful and so important. Coming from 2 John chapter 1, 9 through 11. <clears throat> Again, if you do not have your Bibles, write it down so you can go back and you can study this for yourself. This coming from 2 John uh, chapter 1. Verses 9 through 11. But again, read the whole chapter. It's not that large. Listen what it says again. Everyone who goes ahead and does not remain true. Now right there when you say everyone that everyone who go ahead and does not remain true. That means someone started out in the truth. But they went ahead. And they went away from the truth. So that's why it's very important to look at certain words and get a good understanding of it. So again, everyone who goes to hand and does not remain true to what the Messiah has taught, that's Christ, does not have God. Why? Because they went away from what the Messiah taught. So they are without God. Those who remain true to his teaching. Have both. Remember, both mean two or what? Two or someone, two or something, or two or some place. It always means two. So I'm read that part again. Those who remain true. That's very important. We must remain true to Yah to Yahshua's teaching. In other words, we don't have neither one of them. That's why the Bible said those who remain true to his teaching have both. The Father and the Son. Now that's again is coming from uh, 2 John uh, chapter 1, 9, 3, 11, and I'm reading it from the complete Jewish Bible. But listen what it also says. If someone come to you and does not bring this teaching, don't welcome him into your home. Don't even say shalom. In other words, do not say peace be unto you. To him, for the person who says shalom to him, shares in his evil deed. You know, the Bible teaches us, do not be partakers of other men's sin. So if anyone don't bring this teaching about people going away from what Yeshua taught, they do not have both of them. They do not have the Father or the Son. It's if they don't bring that, they don't say that to you. He said, don't welcome them in your home because if you do, you're being partakers. You're opening a door for them to keep spreading lies and deception. So don't be partakers, again, 
of other men's sin. Here it says evil deed. But we do have the scripture also said, uh, do not be partakers of other men's sin. Uh, number two. If man taught a way of doing things according to the Holy Scripture, what is written, would you receive that? Well, many people would say, yeah, of course. If people are teaching me the word of God, I receive it. But when we actually look out there and listen to different people and hear different people, we know that's a lie if they say we do. Because we know there are many things according to the scripture people will not receive. They will receive what men said over what scripture says. As I said to someone, I was telling a pastor on yesterday how I had to correct someone because they was in error. And so the person never said what scripture said. The person never said what God said. The person never said what Yahshua Jesus said. They just kept telling me what another pastor said. Well, that's why we need to get into the scripture and see if what that person said is according to what the Messiah said, what the uh, disciple taught as well. Uh, number three, if man taught you anything different from what Yeshua taught, have you received it, received it, or would you receive it? Well, I know for myself, there are many things people have taught different from what Yeshua taught, and people have received it. And not only that, they are probably still receiving it. You know why? Because they do not go back and check it out for themselves to see if what was said was true or false. Hallelujah. Uh, number four. If man taught ways according to the Holy Scriptures, but you misunderstood the meaning of what he taught. Would you repent from what you once believed and did and receive the correct understanding of what you misunderstood? In other words, just in case you misunderstood something, would you go back and search the scriptures to see if what you heard was not correct? And then once you find out it's not correct, would you repent? and believe what is correct do not go beyond what the written scripture says in other words if the scripture didn't say it yeshua didn't teach it those disciples didn't teach it don't receive it number five because it did not mean what you thought it meant would you be willing to search the scripture for a more perfect complete understanding and receive the correct meaning and ways of doing things and repent from what you were taught or led to believe. Because many times we are taught certain things and many times Satan just lead us to believe a lie. He want us to believe a lie because he know the lie would never make us free. So yeah, sometimes people can lead us to believe something and sometimes we can just believe that ourselves. You know, well I thought that's what it said. But is that what it said? You know, it kind of reminds me years ago, someone was preaching, and another minister kept saying amen. And so later on, I said, do you realize what you said amen to? She said, what? And when I told her, she said, oh, no. Uh, oh, I didn't mean to say uh, amen to that. And so what happened, as we, I was sharing with another pastor yesterday, and as she said as well, it's time for God's people to be taught. There's too much preaching going on. People need to be taught the word of God. And as I said to her, I said, you know, I went on a, 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 I went on a someone page and someone was ministering. I go, I couldn't hear. I couldn't hear a word. I mean, I could hear a word here and there because it was so noisy, so much yelling. You couldn't really understand. And then when this is happening, people said, amen. Praise the Lord, but did you really hear what was being said? Did you really hear it? Were you really listening to what was being said before you said amen? Do you know when you say amen, uh, so someone said uh, it means so be it. But I know amen mean agreement. Amen, that means you are agreeing with what is being said. So be careful when you say amen. 
Especially when you don't know what you're saying amen to. You know, I'm going to listen before I say amen. I'm going to listen before I say praise the Lord. I'm going to listen before I say hallelujah. I'm not going to just say amen, praise the Lord, because everybody else is saying amen, praise the Lord, making a lot of noise, jumping and shouting, and I don't know what they're saying. The devil can be speaking to them if you don't know what they're saying, and you would be saying amen to the devil. Hallelujah. That was the Holy Ghost. Again, <clears throat> do not go beyond what is written. Therefore, get your mind ready for work. Keep yourselves under control and fix your hope fully on the gift you will receive when Yahshua the Messiah is revealed. Well, we know a gift, Yahshua is a gift. We know the Holy Ghost is a gift. God give us many gifts. And so when Yahshua is revealed, it said, let me read it again so we can get it right. Keep yourselves under control and fix your hopes fully on the gift. Well, we know that's Yahshua. We already fixed our hope on him. On the gift you will receive, but it says when. When are you going to receive it? When Yahshua the Messiah is revealed. Because many people have not seen Yahshua. Many people have not been made known who he is. Because he haven't been made known. The word reveal me made known. The word reveal me manifest. And so we want to hold on to the gift, not just believing on the gift, but getting to know the gift. You know, that's what he said, that we might know, not believe anymore. Eternal life is that we might know the only true God and Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, whom God sent. So we want to get to know. Hallelujah. Number six. If scripture teaches one thing, but man teaches another thing, which one should you believe and receive? If scripture teaches one thing, but man teaches another thing, which one should you believe and receive? You are to believe the scriptures over whatever man teaches, no matter who they are. You are to receive what is in scripture? What is written down? Second Thessalonians uh, chapter 3 verse 14. Reading from the complete Jewish Bible. Furthermore, if anyone does not obey what we are saying in this letter. Now listen to this. I mean it's in there like three times dealing with people not obeying what the disciples said or Yeshua said. Furthermore, if anyone does not obey what we are saying in this letter, take note of him and have nothing to do with him so that he will be ashamed. Read that again. Furthermore, if anyone does not obey what we are saying in this letter, so read the letter, 2 Thessalonians 3 and 14, I have, read it. And then he says what? If anyone, uh, if anyone does not obey what we are saying in this letter, take note of him and have nothing to do with him so that he will be ashamed. And sometimes we don't understand when we say, well, uh, we are to fellowship with our sisters and brothers no matter what. Well, now we're going beyond what Scripture said. Because it's telling us that people doing certain things have nothing to do with them. Don't even allow them in your house. Again, one. Yeshua Jesus taught his disciples, and if Yeshua Jesus taught his disciples, you the correct way of doing things, would you receive it over what man teaches? This is again number six. 
If you are not remaining true to the Messiah teaching, you are in big, big trouble. Repent and believe the Messiah's teaching and what is written over everything anyone teaches. That means you receive what Yeshua taught, what those disciples taught, what is written over everyone, everything someone else teaches. If you are not remaining true again to the Messiah teaching, you are in big, big trouble. Repent and believe the Messiah teaching and what is written over everything anyone teaches. Do not go beyond what is written. Therefore, get your mind ready for work. Like, do you know when you study the scripture, Louise, your mind is at work? Yeah, that's what's happening. You're working your mind. Paul says, I work harder than all of them. I don't think he was speaking so much with his hand at that time. Because it takes work to get to know God. It takes work to get to know Yahshua. It get take work to get to know the Holy Ghost. It take work to get to know the Holy Spirit. Because you gotta study. You gotta search. You need to spend some time. As I said, there are hours and hours, five hours and longer, I'm studying and seeking out the Word of God. Because I want to know. I don't want to just believe what someone said. I want to know. And then if someone says something, something go off in my spirit that tell me it's not true, I'm going back and I'm going to study. And I'm going to search it out. So that takes work. Sometimes people feel like, why are you are so tired? Because it takes work. You work in your mind, just like my daughter, uh, most of her uh, work is on the phone talking to people. She'd be exhausted because she's talking all day. That's work. It tires you out. And so, working the scripture, you get tired as well. I remember years ago, there were pastors and they would teach one, one, uh, they would teach one time during the day. One sermon. And they said well, they had to go home and take a nap. Because they were so exhausted for teaching that one service. And I and I just look. There t I have taught, I think it was actually eight times in one day. Eight different times in one day. Was I exhausted by the time I finished the eighth time? Eight time? Yes, I was. But teaching one sermon, uh, preaching one sermon and you so tired you need a nap? Well... Hallelujah. If you get old, I can understand it. But if you're young, my God. Hallelujah. Again, Father in heaven, this is your people, those whom you gave to your son, Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus, and give them open ears to hear, spiritual ears to see, and heart of flesh to receive in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus. Let the Holy Ghost fall upon them, that they might testify of who Yeshua, Jesus, is said he is i am the son of the living god why did i write that because yeshua said when the holy ghost come he's going to testify of me many people are leading people astray they think when the holy ghost come you are to do some other things but my bible doesn't teach me that you going ahead of what yeshua taught yeshua said when the Holy Ghost come, he's going to testify of me. He's going to take a mind and show it to you. Then he tell us why he said what he said. He said, everything the Father has is mine. And so that's what the Holy Ghost does. It testify of Yeshua. And it takes what Yeshua has and it show it to us. That's why Yeshua says, I'm going to send you another comforter from my Father. Other words, it's coming from my Father. I'm not going to leave you alone. So we have that spirit that should be inside of us to comfort us, to teach us. That's why the Bible teaches us the comforter is the Holy Ghost. And then we know that is an anointing that God put up on us that give us the power to do what we thought we could not do. You know, some people were saying, I've been there and done that. I can't teach the word of God. I can't preach the word of God. 
But they still say I can do all things through Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus, the Christ who strengthened me. So yes, you can. You just have to apply yourself. You have to take time out and study the word of God. You have to take time out and allow Yeshua to teach you, not just men, but allow Yeshua to teach you. As we said, how Mary was at his feet listening to him. He was teaching her, and she wanted to know what he had to say. And so that's how we, we learn. We get down at the master feet and let, allow him to teach us. That's why the Bible teaches us that anointing that teach you shall continue to teach you. You don't need anyone else to teach you. That doesn't mean don't listen to anybody else because the Bible said, how can you hear except by a preacher? You know, and so, yeah, people are to teach us. Yes, in the Bible, those disciples went around and they taught people. But what we are saying is, the Holy Ghost, the anointing, is the best teacher. Because if someone else teaches us, what happens if they're not teaching us the truth? We can get a bad seed and spread a bad seed. Like we've been speaking about this bad seed that was started many, many years ago and caused so many people to go away from Yahshua. What Yahshua taught, that was a bad seed. So if I don't know the scripture, guess what? I'll receive that bad seed and I'll pass that bad seed down to from generation to generation to generation. And that's why Yahshua said every plant that my heavenly father did not plant shall be rooted out. So he's telling me if a lie is out there, root it out. He's telling me if someone is deceiving people, root it out. Because God didn't say it. It's not in scripture. He didn't say it. Disciple, disciple didn't say it. So if you, it doesn't get plucked up by the root, guess what? It's going to keep spreading just like wild grass. It's just going to keep spreading over and over again from generation to generation to generation. And we see that happening. Bad seed. Because nobody took the time to study the word of God and to go back and try to rip that thing up. Well, you can get it out of some people. You might not get it out of everyone because some people just don't want to let it go up. I've been like this all my life. This is what somebody taught me. I don't care what you say. And, and too lazy to go back and look in the Bible to see if it's really scripture. Hallelujah. That was told to go. Oops, I just went up too far. We already we stopped now. I'm not way down there. Well, you hit these things that just go flying away. They have a mind of their own. Hallelujah. I don't think I got to James yet. Okay. Where are we? I think that's where I just finished. I hope that's where I was. Okay. Uh, Ephesians 3 and 5. I'm not sure if I'm down there for it. Hold on. I don't want to miss this. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Okay, you might go over here. Okay, I think that's where we are. Hope just oh, come back here. Ephesians 3 5. Oh no, it did it to me again. Let's uh, stop that. Okay, here we are. I think we are at Ephesians 3 and 5. I hope we are. A complete Jewish Bible. In past generation, um, yeah. In past generation, it was not made known to mankind as the Spirit is now revealing. Remember, the the Spirit revealed things to us. That's why Yeshua said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you, but my Father in heaven. So again, in past generation, it was not made known to mankind as the Spirit is now revealing it to his emissionary, meaning apostles and prophets. Please read this chapter. It teaches us about Paul's revelation of the secret plan concerning the Messiah kept hidden for ages. That's why the Bible said, please is God to hide a thing. But I don't know if the king is to search out the matter. So this secret plan has to do with Yeshua was there from the foundation of the world. And so how do we know? You find it in uh, Proverbs chapter 8, and I have taught that before and encouraged people to go back and read the chapter. I was appointed before the world, before the start, before the earth beginning. 
that mean Yeshua was appointed before the foundation of the world because the world was made through him and for him. Read in Ephesians 3, 4, and 5, and verse 9. But again, read the entire chapter. It's very powerful. And if you read what I have written, notice again, don't go beyond what is written. <clears throat> and if you read what I have written, you will grasp how I understand the secret plan concerning the Messiah. There it is. So when I said before that secret plan was concerning the Messiah is in Ephesians chapter number 3. And he goes on verse 5. In past generation it was not made known to mankind. That means things was hid. As the Spirit is now revealing it to his missionaries, apostles, and prophets. So that's what the Spirit is doing now. The Spirit, when we get close to the Lord, not only just in Him, but we get to know Him. Then the Spirit start revealing things to us, and the Spirit start manifesting, making things known to us, things that was hidden from the foundation of the world, things that we did not understand, although we read it over and over again, but now our spiritual eyes and spiritual ears and our heart uh, uh, coming open our eyes, we can see better, our ears, we can hear better, our hearts have went from stone unto flesh. And that's what he says, I'll give you a new heart, I'll give you a new spirit, and we are to have that heart of flesh. Verse number 9, <clears throat> same chapter. And I'm letting everyone see how this secret plan is going to work out. The plan kept hidden for ages by God, the creator of everything. In other words, even Yeshua was created. Created of everything. That's why I guess somewhere in scripture it says there was no God created before me. Well, God wasn't created. God always was from everlasting to everlasting. So again, you go to Proverbs chapter 8. I'm reading verse 22 and 23. Adonai made me at the beginning of his way. The first of his ancients works. I was appointed before the world, before the start, before the earth began. Do not go beyond what is written. 1 Corinthians 4 and 6, complete Jewish Bible. Now what I have said here, brothers, I have used myself and Apollos as an example to teach you not to go beyond what the written says. Proudly taking the side of one leader, against another now in case you all was on here yesterday or day before i'm not teaching the same thing i'm using certain scriptures over and over again to show how we're not to go beyond what the messiah said we're not to go beyond what is written down in scripture so first peter 1 13 complete jewish bible since we are not to go beyond what is written, look what 1 Peter 1 and 13 says, verse 13. Therefore, get your minds ready for work. Keep yourselves under control and fix your hope fully on the gift you will receive when Yahshua the Messiah, Jesus the Christ, is revealed. So going back, we must keep our mind working. That's why I said work out your own salvation. So you, how do you work out your out your salvation? You, you gotta got keep your mind working the scripture. And so when scripture are revealed to us, it tell us what we should do. We are to obey. Tell us what we should not do. We should obey the word of God because if we don't obey it, it's not going to do us any good. Just reading. And nothing is happening. Uh, again, 2 Thessalonians. I didn't read this, I don't think. 2 Thessalonians 3 and 14, complete Jewish Bible. Furthermore, if anyone does not obey what we are saying in this letter, take note of him and have nothing to do with him, so that he will be ashamed. Now, AMP, and that's why I love to use different translations. That was complete Jewish Bible. This one is AMP. 
Now, if anyone in the church, now, if you notice, the other translation didn't say church, but we should know that's church or people just teaching the word of God. Now, if anyone in the church does not obey what we say in this letter, take special note of that person and do not associate with him so that he will be ashamed and repent. Well, remember, sometimes that's what brings people to repentance. When, when you depart from them, they say, oh, my friend don't want to hang out with me anymore because I'm still doing this and I'm still doing that. So I need to stop doing this and then maybe my friend will hang out with me again. Uh, my sister don't like to go with me to certain places because my sister don't believe I should be doing this and she's not going to do it. And so maybe I need to choose not to do certain things and then my sister and I can hang out even more. Understand what I'm saying, somebody. Because there are certain things I will not be partakers in because it's not right. It's evil. And I'm not supposed to be partakers in other men's sin. So, if I say, well, I'm not going to go here because this is going on, then people may say, oh, she thinks she's better. No, because I know the word of God. He told me not to participate in certain things. So you can go certain places, but sometimes you just have to move out of the way and don't associate with certain things. Don't be partakers of it. Hallelujah. Again, he says, now if anyone in the church does not obey what we say in this letter, take special note of that person and do not associate with him so that he will be ashamed and repent. Yeshua Jesus became the author of eternal salvation deliverance unto whom all who obey him. In other words, if we do not obey the things that Yeshua said, we will not have the Father or the Son. If we go beyond what he wrote, what he taught, we will not have fellowship with the Father or the Son. Remember where the disciples said, our fellowship is truly with the Father and with his Son, Yeshua the Messiah. And so they had fellowship because they was what? They was not just believers. They was followers of Yeshua the Messiah. Hebrews 5, 9, King James. <clears throat> and being made perfect. And being made perfect. Now who was made perfect? Yeshua the Messiah. God was always perfect. God was always complete. God was always mature. But Jesus had to, Yahshua, had to go through trials and temptation before he became perfect. So listen what it says. You can find this again in Hebrews chapter 5 and verse 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that what? Obey him. That's eternal deliverance, eternal salvation, complete Jewish Bible. And after he had been brought to the goal, that means he finished his work, he became the source of eternal deliverance unto all who obey him. How can one deceive themselves by only hearing and not providing them proving let me go back how can one deceive themselves by only hearing and not proving themselves doors of the word read it again how can one deceive themselves because if people can deceive us but many times we deceive ourselves how can one deceive themselves by only hearing and not Proving themselves doors of the work. Where can we find that? See, don't go beyond what is written in Scripture says. John, James 1, 22, complete Jewish Bible. Again, that's James 1, 22, complete Jewish Bible. 
Don't deceive yourselves. By only hearing what the word says, but do it. AMP. But prove yourselves doors of the word. Actively and continuously obeying God's precept. And not merely listening who hear the word, but fail to internalize its meaning. Deluding yourselves by unsound reasoning contrary to the truth. Well, that's what happened. People deceive themselves, deluding themselves because they're not abiding in the truth. Do not go beyond what is written. Second John 1 9 11 complete Jewish Bible again. Everyone who go ahead and does not remain true to what the Messiah has taught does not have God. Those who remain true to his teaching have both the Father and the Son. If someone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, don't welcome him into your home. Don't even say shalom to him, for the person who says shalom to him shares in his evil deed. So if someone is not bringing truth to you all people, don't associate with them. If people are not teaching truth in your church, get out. If people are not bringing truth to your house, put them out. <laughs> Number one, it said don't even let them in. But sometimes you have to let them in and see what they're going to say. Because I remember uh, certain groups will come to the house. And you know the one that care. I won't mention no name. The one that carry these little books and give them to you. And so even when I was in Waco, I would have people come to my house and sometimes I would let them in and I would hear what they have to say because this is how we can uh, help correct people and they can help correct us by listening to each other. And so there was a group walking down the street and when they came to me, I was actually in the garage, I remember it very well, and so they, there was seven days at Vanish, I think it was, and they came to the door and I said, who do you say Jesus is? I was saying Jesus at that time, I believe. And they said, he's the son of God. I said, okay, come on, we can talk. And then I had another group, Jehovah Witnesses, I'll call the group. And even in Waco, and it's since I've been here, and so even since I've been here in Georgia, and they came to the door, and I think it was like two of them, I believe it was a husband and wife. And so when they came to the door, I said, who do you say Jesus is? They said, he's the son of God. I said, come on in. We can talk. Now, some people are going beyond what some other people says and say because they have a title on their name, they don't believe Jesus Christ is the son of God. I said, that's not true. Some do. Some do not. Some Baptists do. Some do not. Some Pentecostals do. Some do not. And so you can't judge a person about a label on them because you have to actually ask the person. And then people will say, Muslim, do not believe Jesus Christ, the Son of God, Yeshua. I said, that's not true. Some do, some do not. They just don't believe he is God the Father, which he is not. And that's why when people <coughs> say they are the same one, they have went beyond what the scripture said. Because Yeshua says my father is greater than I am. So how can you be greater than you are? You can become greater. And Yeshua says my father sent me. How do we go beyond what the scripture said when we say God came himself? And so many people have taught people to go beyond what scripture said. And that's why you don't have God. And you don't have Yeshua and Messiah, and we do not believe in them both. And why Yeshua said, <coughs> again, this is life eternal, that they may know thee, not believe thee. They may know thee, the only true God. In addition to that, and Yeshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. That's in again, 1 John chapter 17. Read the whole chapter, but that's in 1 John 17, verses 1 through 3. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Again. Anyone who run on ahead and does not remain in the doctrine of Christ and show the Messiah. That is, one who is not content with what he taught does not have God. But the one who continues to remain in the teaching of Christ does have God. He have both the Father and the Son. If man taught a way of doing things according to the Holy Scriptures, would you receive it? Now, what I have taught is according to the Holy Scripture. Will you receive it? James 1, 22, Complete Jewish Bible. Again, <clears throat> don't deceive yourself by only hearing what the Word says, but do it. Also, receive it. AMP, but prove yourselves doers of the word, actively and continuously obeying God's precept, and not merely listening, who hear the word but fail to internalize its meaning, deluding yourselves by unsound reasoning contrary to the truth. First Peter uh, 1. Uh, read this entire chapter as I said <clears throat> you know when you read a verse you don't get a lot out of a verse like for instance John 3.16 many people just quote John 3.16 that they that's the only thing they know but they misunderstand if they don't read the whole chapter and so by not reading the whole chapter you go beyond what it actually meant and so, when we read the whole chapter, sometimes you need to go before, sometimes you need to go after. The scripture always explains itself. Always. You just have to keep reading. You just have to keep studying. Have you have started out reading something and said, that don't make any sense. I don't understand this. But once you keep reading, you say, oh, that's what it meant. The same way when a movie starts out. You don't know how that movie going to end sometimes. Like, you know, they show something and I can guess like, oh, that person probably going to be the one that do it. You know, but sometimes it's not that person. So when a movie begins, we don't, if you never watched it, how you, you don't know the middle, you don't know the end because you haven't seen the whole thing. So you just know what you saw in the beginning. But what, what about all that stuff in between? All the way to the end where now you can understand the, the whole movie. You know, sometimes I watch a movie and, and it's so crazy. And you go, this is a dumb, crazy movie. Who would even make something like that? But you keep watching it, hoping it's going to get better and make some sense. And then you watch the whole thing. You said, that was one crazy movie. I just waste my time. That movie did not make any sense. But I tell you, God's word does make sense. If we read the entire word. Hallelujah. So first Peter he says. From Peter. And a missionary. Apostle of Yeshua the Messiah. To God chosen people. Living as alien. And then they give different places. Where his people was there. And they was living as alien. And you know I hate it. when it, I hate that when people will call. People from other countries. Aliens. I go, oh, that don't sound so good. But you know, the Bible speaks of that. It says, chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father and set apart by the Spirit for obeying Yeshua the Messiah and for sprinkling with his blood. Let's read that again. Chosen according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. And set apart by the Spirit. Well, those disciples are set apart, or was, from other people. We are set apart from some people. And we are set apart for a purpose. For obeying Yahshua the Messiah and for sprinkling with his blood. Now, we know some people are still sprinkling today, right? Certain groups, uh, you know, instead of uh, baptizing people, they sprinkle people. But the Bible tells us 
We are to baptize people. Yahshua went in the water. He came up out of the water. That's why we know he was in the water. But when he came out of the water, he was praying and the heaven was open. So we know he was in the water. But here it speak of sprinkling with the blood. Well, we know Yeshua's blood cleanses us. So we don't get all his blood at one time. It's like a sprinkling, you know. You sprinkle this, like you sprinkle salt on something, you sprinkle pepper on something, that's sprinkling. Well, when we sin, hallelujah, and confess our sin, then the blood cleanses us. But that's not all his blood. In other words, he would run out of blood, he wouldn't have any, right? And so when we're in him, abiding in him, when we sin, we confess and repent, it washes it away. And then we said it washes away. But we shouldn't keep sinning so it can keep what? Washing it away. Because there is a time that there is no more sacrifice for it. That means he won't be washing it away anymore. He give us over to what you call a reprobate mind. Anybody say any different? They have went beyond what Yeshua taught. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 4 and 6 again. Now in what I have said here, brothers, I have used myself and Apollos as an example to teach you not to go beyond what the written says. Proudly taking the side of one leader against another. And we're going to stop there. That exactly as we said what happened. Well, that's why we have different groups. Different denomination. Some believe this. Some believe that. We separate ourselves because uh, uh, one believe this and one believe that. Well, if one is lying and one is deceiving, that we shouldn't have anything to do with them. We should not be partakers with them. The Bible teaches us that. But we have all these groups. Why? Because we are not speaking the same thing. We don't have the same purpose. We do not have the same mind. And that's why Paul said, all of you agree. That one means you agree. All of you agree in what you say. All of you agree. And that's why the Bible said, let this mind be in you that's also in the Messiah. Well, the mind that was in Yeshua the Messiah, he had the mind of his father to do his father's will. And so when we have the mind of Yeshua, we have the mind of God. That's why I said, let this mind be in you that was also in Yeshua. So Yeshua had his father's mind. We're to have that same mind. So where we say when we want to do something, we know it's not right, even so, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And so that's the mind I want. I want that mind where I want to do God's will. Because I know when I'm doing his will, he's pleased with me. But if I'm not doing his will, he's not pleased with me. See, he was well pleased with Yeshua because Yeshua never did sin. Although Yeshua was tried, he was made the author because he went through trials and tribulations just like we go through and that's why he know everything that we go through and that's why the bible says his mercy is there throughout all generations his grace is sufficient for every need so when we're going through something the bible teaches us whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved that means when you do not want to submit, that's why the Bible says submit yourself unto God and resist the devil and he will flee from you. So even though you do not want to submit, you submit anyway. Someone asked me the other day, say what happened when someone don't want to do something and they do it anyway? I said they keep doing it to they want to do it. She said that's a good answer. You know, because we don't always want to do right, right? 
You know, sometimes we say, I don't want to do this, but I know it's the right thing to do, so I'm going to do it anyway. So what you do, you keep doing it until you enjoy doing what's right. Because that's what gives you peace. You don't have to worry about saying, I'm sorry, and I'm, uh, I, I said I wasn't going to do it, but I did it again. That old devil, he tricked me. No, the devil didn't trick you. If you ain't got sure, you have power over the devil. You just chose not to use it. If I'm in it, yeah, sure, I have power over the devil. I just chose not to use it. Because he always going to give me choices to use it or not. That's why you submit or you reject. You submit or you reject. Because if you submit, God always going to open the door for us to escape. Although we may fall sometimes, he pick us up, dust us off, say get back out there, try it again. But what happens when you keep falling? And like that commercial, I have fallen and I can't get back up. That's why people say I have went so far down, I just can't get back up. But I believe as long as life is in us, we can get back up. We just have to keep trying and God may let us suffer a little longer because our head was so hard. And that's why he said he would give us over to a reprobate mind that's a mind that God is not pleased with. It's just like a dog returning back to his vomit after he cleaned us up, you know. You wash a dog and he go out there and get in the dirt, get dirty all over again. But boy, when he shake himself off, it's just like he never got dirty. So when we repent, it's just like we never did it. But we don't continue to do it just so he can keep cleansing us. That's why I said, I'm married to Yahshua. I don't clean up behind him. He cleaned up behind me, and I try to make sure I don't keep uh, keep sinning. So he has to keep cleaning up behind me. No, I don't want him to do that. He gives me power to overcome those things. So it's up to me, my choice again, to use it or refuse it. Hallelujah! Once again, if we have anybody out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, the Bible teaches us how we're justified by our faith. We believe on God and we believe that God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. We're justified by our faith. Then Romans 10, verse 9 through 10 says, We confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua and believe in our hearts that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved out of the heart. Man believeth unto righteousness and confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. First John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, he faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Proverbs 28 and 13, he that confesses continuation, he that confesses and forsake, repent. From his sins shall have mercy, but he that confesses and forsakes not will not prosper. That means you can't go forward. In order to go forward, we must agree with God. Confession doesn't mean to say I'm sorry. We never saw what he said. Say you're sorry. No. Agree with God. If God said it's wrong, you say it's wrong. If God said it's right, you say it's right. That's why he said, don't call good, good, don't call good evil, and don't call evil good. Call it what it is. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you all so much. I pray you all have a blessed week. We will, I will not be on Sunday. I'll be on Sunday. I'll be out of town. So you all pray for traveling grace. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Father, we come once again in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. God, I thank you right now. I thank you for meeting us here tonight. God, I thank you for each and every one online. I thank you for those on Facebook, God. I thank you for those who may come by later. God, I pray that you bless them in a special way, God, just for taking time out, oh God, to hear from you. Not from me, but to hear your word. God, I pray for a hunger and a thirst out there, a hunger and a thirst after righteousness. God, I pray, oh God, that you open spiritual eyes and soft ears, oh God, and unhardened heart, oh God, that we will receive what Yeshua said. We will reject what he did not say. We will receive what is written down in scriptures. We will reject what's not written down in scripture. God, we thank you right now. Help us not to go beyond, oh God. 
but help us to follow the teaching that's written in your word. God, I love you, I praise you, and I give you honor and glory, and I bless your people in the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You all have a wonderful day. Be blessed in the name of Yeshua, the Messiah. Study the word of God. If the word is a blessing to you, share the word of God. Share it with your family. If you don't want to share it on Facebook, just tell your family, read this. Just tell your family, read this. You know, let's try to get our family into Yahshua the Messiah. And not just in him, but running that race. Because we don't know when he's coming. We do not know when he's coming. Uh, my uh, granddaughter was in an accident yesterday. You know what? Yesterday or day before uh, yesterday, but she's doing good. Praise the Lord. But guess what? She could have lost her life. She could have lost her life. And the first thing that come to my mind, what happened if she did? What happened if she did? And that's, that's why we need to try to get our family to serve the Lord. That if they leave here, they'll go to a better place. That's my goal, people, to try to help my friends and my family to live for the Lord. That when they leave this place, they're not... Not giving them wings when they did, never did anything for the Lord. They never served the Lord. We, we fool ourselves when we do that. We don't want to do that. Call it what it is. And so we want to teach them the right way. And guess what? When we do that, the Bible says that blood is not on our hand. But if we know the truth, and we're not teaching and telling them what's right, the Bible says that blood is on our hand. I don't want nobody blood on my hand, but if I warn them from the Lord, he said, they don't repent, he said, I will forget, even if they were doing what's right. He said, if you repent from your sin, he said, I won't remember your sin no more. But he used the but word. He said, but if you turn away from your righteousness, doing what's right, he said, I will not remember your righteousness anymore. So when we say different, you're going beyond what Yeshua taught. Hallelujah. You all be blessed in the name of Yeshua. I give you praise, Lord.